In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Fifine K678 USB microphone and giving you my impressions and review of it as a musician. Hey guys, I'm Tyler. Thank you for tuning back into the channel once again. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you want to see more content just like this. So in this video, I am doing a bit of a tech, bit of music, music tech crossover review here with the Fi Fine 678 microphone. This is a USB microphone and I've been asked by Fi Fine to review it. So I have received this product free, full disclaimer there. And I'm just gonna put it through its paces and give you an honest review and let you know how I feel about this product. As you saw in the introduction, it is straight out of the box from Amazon. So I don't really have any preconceptions, any pre-thoughts about this product. Just gonna go straight into the review and I'm gonna do it from the perspective as a musician. Probably not really specifically to bass players. There is some use for a microphone like this for bass players. But maybe that's more on the teaching side if you're you're doing that in this climate that we're living in right now. I think the primary use for a USB microphone is for the occasional voiceover, your Zoom calls, perhaps a live stream, things like that. And some of the things that I've been doing over the course of 2020 and now into 2021 has involved a lot of being on my computer with a microphone plugged in and interacting with people that way. So I'm hoping that this product can really fill that gap, fill that niche, and hopefully might be able to do something for you guys too. So first things first, the packaging and the outside of the product gives a really nice impression of a great product, to be honest. It's gone for that very modern Apple type styling, dare I say, very simple, but clean box. And as you can see, the design of the, the microphone here is a capsule, much like a competitor such as the Blue Yeti or those kind of products. Um, but let's not talk about it too much. Let's just open the box and run through all the different specs and features. And I'm going to set it up as well. And we'll run through all that and see how easy that is. And just going to really go in depth as much as I can with this review. So just the tape at the front there to cut. And then it opens like a, a jack in the box type thing, which I think is quite cool. I like that. It's a bit different. You have the Fifine information here. Uh, all about your experience and if you need to need any help or anything and also a two-year warranty to set up with that piece of paper right there and then this is the user guide right here hopefully i won't have to refer to this i'm going to try and set it up without doing that because i think sometimes that's the mark of a great product but it's there if we need it great foam really nice packaging there and here we've got the microphone screw adapter so that's really pretty useful um, and something that I'd actually just gone and bought a load of, which is a microphone stand adapter to a smaller camera size adapter. Um, so that's pretty annoying actually in a way, but great that they've given that in the box because that's really useful and, and makes life really easy for someone like me who's a musician and has loads of mute mic stands, but not as many camera stands. So that's that in there. Then we've got the microphone itself. Nice, I like the way that slides out and unfolds. Just move that out of the way slightly there. And then we have the product set up like this, as you can see. So that's just two screws either side to keep it nice and tight and locked in place. That's pretty much it for the majority of the box. Just this one last thing, which I'm assuming is going to be all the cables. Nice, simple packaging. They've gone really, they've done the packaging really well. I do actually appreciate this. Uh, Anyone who knows me in some of my videos, I've said I'm a bit of a big Apple fan. So this kind of stuff does get me. I do really enjoy unboxing a product that is nicely done. So there we go. Um, it's a USB cable there. Nice touch to have the Velcro on it because that's just a really nice addition. And the fact that it's uh, got these great silver space gray type ends going to match with a lot of modern max and that kind of product and then it's a usb a connection on the end which is a pain um for me because i am a mac user an ipad pro user um, and my mac is from 2018 so i need a usb c adapter and i will grab one of those right now now we've got the anchor this is my personal favorite usb c adapter so usb a to usb 3a to usb c adapter 
it's the anchor model right here i think these are great because they don't really have anything to go wrong with the apple ones you have a cable so that can wear and degrade with these it's literally just the two plugs so there's nothing to go wrong with it you can't go wrong you just stick it on the end of whatever usb a product you have so for me it's going to be this fine fine mic cable stick it on the end of that and i can just forget about it really i don't have to think about having a usb c adapter with me it just lives on there for as long as i need this product and once i'm done with it just take it off and use it wherever i need just looking at the microphone itself, it's got this really nice matte grey rubberized finish. That's really sweet. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, the basket weave for the capsule is really nicely done, which is actually more that I can, than I can say for some of my other products, even warm audio mics, that the, um, the grill is not necessarily straight, but it is on this. I will say immediately I'm noticing that it's picking up finger marks on the, the matte rubberized grate, but I think that happens with pretty much everything that you ever have that's matte finished. On the bottom of the microphone here, you can see there, this is the mic screw adapter hole right there. And then you have the USB end, which is a USB mini, I believe, and then a headphone jack. So you plug your headphones into the bottom of the mic and this acts as your audio interface as well. So that takes care of all your audio needs that you could possibly have. I would say this microphone is pretty heavy, but I think that's pretty useful to be honest, because it means it's got some real solidity on your desk. And if you've got headphones in the bottom of it and you're using those, then it's gonna make sure that there's some solidity and you're not dragging it around if you move your head or anything. So I think that's definitely a plus. I will also say that I think if you take the stand off, you can just keep unscrewing these until you remove the stand. That's gonna make it a lot lighter and make life a lot easier for putting on a microphone stand using the attached screw adapter. On the front of the microphone you have a mute button here so where the Fifine logo underneath that we have this mute button which is ideal particularly if you're on a zoom call or any sort of live stream. I've done songwriters rounds recently where you want to just mute yourself between uh, your song and then other people doing theirs. You don't want to be ruining everybody else's live stream. So great, thoughtful feature to have on the front of the microphone there. I really like that. So now I'm just going to get this microphone set up, plug it into my Mac, and let's see how it sounds. So first things first, I'm just going to take the USB cable that they've supplied with the device, pop this round the back and plug it up into the bottom of the device. And then just run this cable out over here to my mic. So now the mic is plugged in. The first thing it does is to illuminate, as you can see there. We've got the light on the front of the mic to say that the USB is plugged into it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to my Mac and find the system preferences to set up the sound. So here we are on the desktop. What I'm going to do now is just head down here to system preferences and head to sound. So there you can see really simple, the microphone is set up there and that has now set the output so that it will be outputting the audio through the microphone, through the headphone jack at the bottom of the device. And input, I wanna also change to that as well. And then as you can see straight away, we're getting input there. What I'm going to do now is to just tweak the gain at the back. So just using the gain knob on the rear here to get it about halfway. I don't want it to go too crazy. I don't want mad level. As an audio person, audio engineer, I like to have a lot of headroom because you can always make audio louder. So they're kind of roughly about 50%, even on the peaks. There you go. That's a peak right there. Um, keeping it in that kind of range is comfortable for me. Uh, you might want to do that, turn that up more when it comes to a Zoom meeting or something like that. But for me, I'm happy with that output right there. So now the audio is set up in system preferences, I'm going to go into Logic and from now on all the audio you hear in this video is going to be through the FiFi mic itself. Just to give you an idea of how it works in everyday use, practical use, and then I'm going to also play a bit of stuff and see how it works for us as musicians. So now I'm just setting up the Logic project, going here up to the FiFi microphone and using that. And I'm going to reduce the IO buffer size down so that anything I'm getting back through is nice and crisp and feels just straight responsive, no lag, no input latency between me saying something and it coming back through. So you are now hearing the input from the Fifine microphone. The first thing I noticed is I'm using these headphones which are my Bayer Dynamic headphones which are quite hard to drive and there's plenty of headroom from the 
um, headphone output there. I've just hit max now. I get a nice clean level into my headphones. It also goes straight through. So I can hear myself very clearly, but I can also hear quite clearly anything that's coming back through the system. I'm just going to move the microphone a little bit closer so you get an idea of how that sounds up close for a more kind of podcasty type setting. So this is the microphone up close. From what I can tell, it's got a very nice crisp top end. It's not too sibilant, it's not too bright, but it is bright enough to be heard very easily. The bottom end response doesn't seem like there's too much bottom end response to me. It seems quite nicely balanced and it'll be worth checking. I might run a bit of an EQ test and just kind of hear how it sounds with this microphone and, and see maybe which frequencies are being highlighted, uh, particularly when I have a play in a minute. I'm just going to play a, a little bit of a song, give an example of a live stream type situation. So I've just shown you how the mic reacts from a little bit of a distance. It really does benefit from being brought up higher a little bit. I think you've got a bit more bass in the voice there, but not too much. There's no low end rumble really with this microphone. It does feel like it's kind of filtered on the bottom end. So that kind of high pass filtered, you're not really getting any super low rumble, which is really what you need for, I think, the purpose of this mic. This mic is not really designed to be a, a low end bass capture mic. It's designed to be a voice mic that can capture what you're doing and put it across on Zoom calls, Skype calls, that kind of thing. So I've just moved on to the mic stand here. I didn't take the stand off itself, um, just because with this kind of short microphone, I didn't really need to. I think if you're using it on a higher boom pole mic, I would probably definitely take the stand off. Um, as you can see, as you move back, it does kind of drastically change the tonality. But I think kind of here, which is roughly five inches away from the capsule itself, is pretty much the optimum for this mic. Not too bad with the plosives, there's a few P's that I'm saying that are getting through a little bit, but I don't think it's doing a bad job at rejecting those at all. The grill's doing a good job of keeping those out. And I think it's quite a nicely clearly defined sound, um, and not bad at all. That's with the gain quite low as well, so the mic's gain is pretty low. I think it's quite a high gain mic in general, it wants to have a healthy signal, um, and it that's what it how it's set up. So for things like Zoom that do limit your audio quite heavily, I think this is going to be absolutely fine and you're going to be right in the ballpark for those kind of platforms and the volume that they need straight out of the box. Uh, next I'm just going to play a little bit of a song for musicians just to give an idea of how this reacts, how it sounds in that situation. I'm going to move it back again a little bit just to get an overall capture of the sound. I would say that this room is not very well treated, I do need to treat this room. Uh, I don't mix in this room, I just use it pretty much for YouTube videos and the odd tiny little bit of things that I do with headphones on and sonar works. So this isn't an ideal sounding room, so it might sound a little bit roomy, but let's see, let's see how this mic does. And I think it's pretty typical of what a lot of musicians are doing, particularly on my scene, a lot of musicians doing live streams on Facebook with other musicians. These kind of situations have become very common. I think this is a, a real world test of how this mic would perform in most people's homes. You're the cliff that just keeps me falling No sudden job when you hit the ground Every night with you's just like flying You get me high and I ain't ever touching down But all these dreams you had with me Are so far gone Now all I see is you, me I'm trapped today gonna leave my dreams are you ever gonna leave me be? every single time you wake up I'm inside of the bed and you're not there just in my head and are you ever gonna hold me like you used to are you ever gonna be there when I swear to God I need you even though you still in my dream 
So I hope that's given you an idea of how this mic sounds as a musician in the context of quite often what I'm doing um, as a songwriter. Another situation I can see people using this microphone for is simple home recording. In this instance, I'm going to use my Gibson Kebmo Blues Master and just give you an idea of how it sounds recording acoustic guitar. This microphone isn't ideal for that in the fact that there isn't a tiltable top, so the attachment from the mic to the mic stand isn't uh, adjustable. Being that it's straight means you can only adjust anything from the boom stand here, and so you might not be able to get necessarily the best angle. At the minute, the angle for this isn't too bad. Unfortunately, you can't see it due to the height of my chair and where the boom stand and the mic sit. Uh, but I'm just going to give you an example of how this sounds right now. Not only are a lot of us using laptops to stream and use Zoom and Skype and so on, but a lot of us are using tablets. I think I'd like to try just using the microphone with an iPad and see how that works out. The iPad's got a better webcam than I've got on my laptop. So to be able to use that for live streams, like I've been talking about, is invaluable and is a much better quality device to use than the laptop. So what I'm going to do is just using the exact same USB-C adapter here from Anchor, link will be in the description to this. I'm going to just plug straight into the iPad and then see if I can get audio playback and then also just record using the microphone itself. So plugging straight in. The microphone light has come on, it's come on green. So that means that it's powered the device. So there's enough power coming from the iPad to power the device. I'm just going to go straight in here. Caitlin Smith Supernova is one of my favourite records of 2020. So I'm just going to just hit play and see if it works. Yeah, that's working perfectly. So that suggests to me that this microphone is absolutely happy to be hot plugged into an iPad. And then just go to GarageBand. What I'll do here is just record some audio. So we've got a microphone up, clean. Uh, there's that input coming in there, as you can see. I can just turn that up there. You can see, yeah, there's definitely input coming in. I think maybe it wants to have a little bit more input. So I'm gonna just turn the mic level up on the back of the device. There we go, there's a bit more input now. And then just gonna hit record and there we go. That's just what the microphone sounds like. I had a bit of a distance here as you can see, but I'm getting clean sound straight through there and adding a little bit of compression to squeeze it. There we go, I think that sounds really great. That's a great sound actually. Just easy, keeps it simple, tone roll off some of that top end. That's lovely. Yeah, that's great. I think that's a great sound for a very quick, easy fix. No real hassle involved there. Plugged it straight in, garage band, found it straight away. And the input level's pretty healthy, it's not too high. Um, and it means you could potentially use this to actually just record anything you wanted to. Take this away with you, pop it in your bag, and that can be your one mic for traveling. If you want to record a vocal, record a guitar, do your Zoom calls, this pretty much is your mic and audio interface for everything in one iPad or laptop. I'm just going to record some acoustic guitar with the microphone. So as you can see here, I'm just unscrewing the mic from the cradle. So we haven't got that extra weight carrying on the stand. And then the mic should just pop out from between these two pieces. There we go. Very simple. And then that's the microphone on its own. As you can see, like I said about the matte finish, it's starting to pick up a few marks. But um, I don't think that's uncharacteristic of anything matte black to be honest. I'm going to just listen back to the audio now and let you know my summary in the last section of this video having reflected on what the mic captured. So those are my examples of the Fifine K678 microphone. Hopefully they're helpful to you if you're looking at this microphone. I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what I believe this microphone would be great for and maybe who it might not be well suited to. I think the overall design of this microphone is great, really fits in with the Blue Yeti and similar products like that for a lesser price. We're looking at £73 approximately and what I will do is I'll leave a link, an affiliate link to this and also the USB-C adapter that I use to plug it into my devices. Um, I will put them in the description so if you want to purchase them head over there and I'll get a little bit of um, commission through the affiliate scheme and that really helps the channel grow so if you do that it's massively appreciated. But this microphone is really well built. I think the 
feel of it is heavy it's pretty dense and that feels like it makes it a quality product i think i never trust cheap microphones that are lightweight you've got to have a microphone with a bit of weight to know that there's quality products in there quality capsule and i think this microphone really does give that feel it's very sleek it fits in really nicely with a modern aesthetic i think it looks really cool on the desk next to the apogee duet the mac the keyboard all that stuff i think the overhead shots look great with that mic sat there, it really fits in with a modern workflow and a modern space. As I say, the build quality of the device itself is pretty much flawless. I also like that the supplied accessories have the Fine Fine logo on them. I think that's a really nice touch and probably a step that they didn't really need to go to, but they have. Uh, and the quality of the cable, it's a decent thick cable. It's mainly but enough that you can move it and get it where you want it, but I think it's a quality cable overall. I think the ease with which the microphone can be taken out of its supplied stand is really useful because it does mean that you can use it for other situations and other examples and I really like this supplied uh, screw fit that goes from microphone uh, stand to a camera stand. That's a really useful adapter to have for a lot of us, particularly musicians. Hello Horatio, I've got Horatio the cat on my lap while I'm doing this little summary. When it comes to sound quality I think this microphone does an admirable job for its price. I think with any of these microphones in the USB category, you're not really looking for a dazzling sonic signature or a great warmth or anything that you might be looking for when you're recording. What you're looking for is a clean signal that can be heard well on Zoom and Skype and all those sort of platforms. And I think this does a job of that perfectly. When you listen to it in a musical context, I think it delivers pretty well. There's definitely a low end roll off. I'd say probably a high pass filter about 100 hertz which removes any real proper bass low end, but in the context of what we're doing, that's probably actually very useful. It stops any rumble. It means what's coming through is gonna be heard quite clearly and without excessive bass end. To that end, I can't really recommend recording bass instruments or anything with a lot of bass with this microphone because it does naturally take out that bottom end. But I think for most of us, that's not really needed. If you're gonna be teaching bass online, I don't think you'd have any problem using this microphone as your mic for the room sound of your amp as well as what you were talking to a student over whatever platform you're using. I do think the place that this comes up a little bit short is when you're trying to record acoustic instruments like acoustic guitar. The amount of gain that the mic has is very high even when you've got the mic gain rolled all the way back and so you don't really have a lot of headroom so if you're sending files to people there's not as much headroom when it comes to mix down when you're using this microphone. So. For most projects and demos, that's absolutely fine, but if you were to use it for higher-end projects, I suggest maybe using an audio interface and a separate microphone to give not only the headroom, but also a bit more of a sonic signature that's more suitable or more exciting for the track. One thing that really impressed me was being able to plug the device straight into both my Mac and my iPad and have it work instantly, and that is pretty much going to secure that this is going to be a piece that I'm going to keep hold of and use regularly in my setup. The fact that it works with iOS and I can use the higher quality webcam on my iPad Pro with this device, it's, it's invaluable to me because the MacBook laptop uh, webcams have always been pretty poor and they still haven't been fully updated yet to something really fitting of a modern standard. So to be able to do a live stream, go on Facebook Live and use this microphone as my audio interface and to broadcast to whoever it is on the other end is, is ideal and so that's going to make sure that it stays as part of my workflow. I think the plug and play nature of this device combined with a very clear sound that represents what I'm doing very well whether that's with the acoustic guitar whether that's singing and writing or whether that's just merely talking and doing a live stream uh, this is definitely going to find a place in my workflow and I think the fact that it comes in a quality box it's a nice solid unit and the fact that it works so simply make it a pretty invaluable tool for the price. So overall, while this is definitely not the best sounding microphone I've ever heard in my life, it is absolutely perfect for the situations for which I think it's designed. So if you are using it for Zoom calls, you're using it to educate, or you're using it just to do the one-off demo or a little bits and pieces, I think you will find a real use for this microphone and at a price that undercuts the majority of other products at this kind of level. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the sonic qualities of the Fine Fine mic and its ease of use. 
Let me know in the comments below how much you've been using your USB microphones or if you've bought a USB microphone specifically over the last year or so where we've all switched to a digital lifestyle, meeting people digitally. Let me know how that's changed your workflow and what microphone you're using. If this video has been helpful to you, don't forget to hit the like button and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That really helps the channel and helps us get out to more people and also keeps you up to date as soon as my videos come out. And also head over to my Instagram, which will be linked below, to keep up to date with the latest of what I'm up to. Overall, I was definitely shocked by the amount of value that you're getting from this product and it's definitely going to find a place in my workflow going forward. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.